Hello, and welcome to episode four of Faking Space, now in its third season. This is Paul on the plane, and moon landing researcher Scott Henderson and I continue to examine very closely the photographs that were handed down by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA for short, from the Apollo program that they claim successfully launched 12 men to the moon's surface and returned them safely back to Earth in the late 1960s into the early 1970s through the most hostile environment known to humanity. We hope you've enjoyed the first three episodes here in Season 3 as we've been diving deeply into how NASA has changed its story about the astronauts' trajectory through and then around the Van Allen radiation belts. The extensive blooper reel starring Neil and Buzz from the Apollo 11 mission and our latest installment which provided a thorough breakdown of what the purported lack of air pressure on the moon would actually mean for the lunar module and the astronauts' spacesuits. In this installment will continue with our analysis of the spacesuits themselves and provide evidence that the spacesuits we were shown by NASA would not survive a trip into low Earth orbit, let alone a half a million mile trip away from and then back to the friendly confines of Earth's atmosphere. So, let's begin. First, many have doubted for 50 years now how those white fluffy but bulky looking spacesuits we are all so familiar with could withstand such a low pressure environment and not become immediately rigid and render the astronauts completely immobile. But we must be careful when touting that whole idea as proof that the spacesuits wouldn't work, as advertised, because NASA claims to have figured that out long before astronauts allegedly stepped foot on the moon. You see, according to NASA, the astronauts actually donned two spacesuits, a pressurized inner suit, as seen here, which was beneath the unpressurized outer white one. So don't be quick to claim the outer white suit would balloon up as the air pressure was reduced because, as the story goes, that part of the spacesuit wasn't even pressurized. We are told this inner pressurized spacesuit, which would still, even to this day, have to be considered a modern marvel of technology, was airtight, mostly made of neoprene and was contained within a layer of embedded mesh-like material to keep it from expanding. Kind of like a balloon inside a bag of netting, only allowing the balloon to expand so far. Further, we're told the fingers, shoulders, knees, and elbows of this inner pressurized suit had accordion-like joints that allowed flexing without ballooning. Truly a technological masterpiece. The outer layer, the white unpressurized suit, was made of fireproof uh, abrasion resistant material we are told, which was designed to provide thermal insulation and protection against micrometeors, but only works in a vacuum. So case closed, right? Uh, not so fast. When you start to closely examine the photographs and employ some basic common sense, as usual, NASA's story just doesn't add up. And here's why. If the white outer suit wasn't pressurized and was designed only to serve as a thermal outer layer, then why do the gloves and helmet attach directly to this unpressurized suit? This is Neil Armstrong's suit as displayed by NASA as his complete kit. The suit flown in Apollo 11 for the claimed moon landings. It has been on display for many years and has been restored and cleaned in an attempt to keep it from decay and as a permanent record of the claimed event. The International Latex Corporation was contracted to make the suits. NASA's updated files claim that it has 21 layers of protection Interesting that none are listed as a protection against radiation, however, but I digress. Here's another attempt to show the updated movements of the astronauts in their suits. The image on the left is from the Apollo 11 press kit. On the right is an image of the alleged pressurized suit. However, it's not pressurized in this photo, and is certainly not in a vacuum chamber. It's clear to see that the suit in the previous frame is not incorporated into this suit. This is a costume for simulation only and does not have the seals required to pressurize. On the top left, the ring is not sealed to the suit and the zipper does not go all the way up. And the zipper would not seal and hold any air pressure. The seals and connections of the helmet and gloves do not compress and have a door latch tongue design for a quick attachment. The suit is done up using zippers poppers or snaps and velcro. 
This would not seal. The zipper does not go all the way up, would not even hold a small amount of pressure. Again, these suits were designed to put on and off easily for simulation purposes and media events only. There is not a pressure suit inside. Even if the inner pressurized suit NASA claims the astronauts wore under the outer unpressurized suits, even if it was incorporated into or between the white abrasion layers, it still wouldn't seal because of the snaps and zipper connections. The connection rings on the glove and the suit are clearly not connected. The band on the suit is visible and the ring is just below it. The gap between the rings are about three inches apart. The ring on the glove is behind the watch. And the rings themselves are quick connect and cannot seal in the vacuum of space or even underwater. The suit is a staged costume used for practice and simulations. The images here are from Buzz descending the ladder from the Apollo simulation photos numbered here. It is very clear the gloves are not attached and, of course, cannot be in a vacuum. It is clear to see here that the connections are attached to this garment and not to the claimed pressurized suit, as there isn't one underneath or incorporated in. The connections shown here are not sealed properly to withstand the vacuum of space. On the left is a food port attached to the bubble helmet, but as you can see, the seal cannot be compressed as what would be required and the inside air pressure would push the cover out and away from the seal. It cannot be used in a vacuum, so the only reason it must be there is to give the astronauts a drink using a straw during practice or simulations. On the above left are four photos of high vacuum seals, metal, and one-time use materials. These are needed to seal in a high and ultra-high vacuum areas, of which the moon we are told was a ultra high vacuum area at 1 times 10 to the negative 11 tor. On the right are the helmet seals of the Apollo missions. The latch fits in the groove for easy installation. This connection does not have the capability to compress the seal and would not function even in a low vacuum. The gloves have a similar type for an easy connection. The surfaces must be clean and free of foreign materials for the seal to be effective. The Apollo astronauts using the same suits covered in dirt for three EVAs it would be impossible for the suits to work and reseal each time. The same is true for the hatch for the LEM, as they had to crawl through, dragging dust and dirt with them. The door seals would not function. The LEM could not be repressurized after re-entry. And the fact remains. The helmet and gloves clearly were attached to the outer white, non-pressurized suit. Even if the connections to the helmet and gloves were able to withstand an ultra-high vacuum environment, the outer white suit would have to be pressurized, which is in direct conflict with NASA's claims. Someone is lying. This has been Paul on the Plane. On behalf of Scott Henderson, thanks for watching.